This is Brad Clayton with the Puzzle Duck Golf Thought of the Month for February 2021. I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video. Last month I asked for a few questions uh, to discuss for the Thought of the Month. I chose three to come up with uh, because they could somewhat overlap. Um, these three questions uh, are all pertaining basically to thought process and not so much mechanics in a golf swing. So I thought I could condense as much as possible into uh, these three. And these subjects can be talked about indefinitely, really, uh, when it comes to opinions and how to approach these uh, scenarios. Uh, again, I don't have advice. I don't have anything other than an opinion. Uh, and this is mine on the short. Uh, because I don't want us in here and talk to you for an hour and a half. Uh, well, I don't, not that I don't want to, but you might not want to listen for an hour and a half. Uh, that being said, the first one uh, says, I think you should cover mentally recovering from a bad start to a round or hitting it bad on the range. Uh, I see buddies all the time who quit on holes two or three. Uh, I haven't had too much problem with this myself. Uh, because I'm hard-headed and competitive, but he likes the lesson. So, uh, talking about that, uh, th there are many different scenarios that go into how uh, hitting a couple of shots will affect the next one. Uh, hitting it bad on the range, uh, not taking that to the golf course, but taking a positive attitude to the golf course and vice versa. If you hit it good on the range and being able to take the good shots onto the golf course. Uh, and if you're not hitting it great on the range and getting ready to go play, leaving the bad shots on the range and going to the golf course with a fresh perspective. Uh, a simple thought process on that is simply that if you're hitting bad golf shots on the range and you're getting ready to go play, uh, and, and this doesn't mean this is going to happen this way, but you do need to go in with some sort of a positive thought process and say, well, maybe I got all my bad shots out of the way on the range, now I'm going to the golf course, I'm going to have a little more focus, I'll be able to go through my routine a little bit more consistently because I'm not rushing to get warmed up and go to the golf course, or to the range, I mean to the first tee. Um, so just simply saying, well, okay, what happens on the range happens on the range. That's done. Let's go to the golf course and I think things are going to get better from here. If you are hitting it good on the range, man, this is a great, I've got a great day ahead of me, I'm hitting good shots. And I'm going to carry that over to the golf course. Ultimately, to me, I personally don't think either one has anything to do with each other, nor does hitting a bad golf shot on the golf course have anything to do with the next golf, short, golf shot. Now, obviously, what you do and the positions you put yourself in on the golf course affect the next shot you're able to hit, but that has nothing to do with what you're getting ready to perform. We are all humans playing this game, and we are not perfect, and we're not able to duplicate the same motion, the same rhythm, the same tempo, the same timing every single time. We can only try to get those closer to closer together so that your patterns are much tighter and you're hitting them more consistently. But at the end of the day, uh, one shot has nothing to do with the next swing you're going to make unless you allow it to. And that means that, that unless you allow yourself to get uptight, tense, ill, uh, upset, hyper, excited, it could be any emotion that you experience, and that builds over time. So if you hit four or five bad golf shots in a row and you're letting that build up and you're getting a little more angry, a little more tense, a little more tight, a little more uh, concerned about what's going on, or you're hitting it really good and you're getting excited, excited, excited because, you know, I can't look forward, wait to, to see what comes next. And, you know, uh, I, I'm having the best round of my day, I mean, of my life, and, and I'm getting better and better. Those things are going to influence the next golf shots because they're going to affect your rhythm, your thought process, your decision-making process, and uh, just your overall golf swing. So to me, if you can look at each golf shot as a single golf shot, I know some people who actually use uh, uh, they actually use uh, small rounds in the round. So they play three holes at the time, or six holes at the time, or nine holes at the time. 
I personally disagree with any of that thought process simply because I think it's one shot at the time. And if you hear over the course of history, you hear a lot of people say that are winning and, and, and doing well as I stayed in the shot. I stayed in the moment. I didn't get ahead of myself. I didn't get behind. I stayed in the moment, in the present. And I think that's extremely important to do in that each golf shot you hit, you do the very best you can do on that golf shot. You never know when it's going to turn around. You never know when you're going to make a 30-footer. You never know when you're going to hit your best drive or potentially a hole-in-one, hole-one out of the fairway, a chip-in. Who knows what's to come? But if you don't do the best you can on each golf shot, you're not going to give yourself the best chance possible to get to that or get those results. So uh, to, to get back to, to the original question here is personally, and it's easier said than done. It takes practice, it takes time, and it takes some uh, understanding of the fact that you can only control this very moment. You can't control the future. You can influence the future by the golf shot you're getting ready to hit. But if you're not controlling the moment and hitting the best golf shot you can hit in that moment, you're not giving yourself a chance to influence the future positively because you're thinking negatively and probably going to take away your ability to hit consistent good golf shots. So stay in the present, stay in the moment, let the past be what it is, even if it's good shots. Because again, I think that people can get too excited and too high and too overconfident if you keep it, if you hit, let's just say you hit five or six really, really good shots in a row. Does that mean the sixth one's going to be good? Maybe, maybe not. But you need to be thinking as positively as possible and taking each shot for what it brings you. And if you can do that each time you have a golf shot throughout the round, add them up at the end of the day, I think you'll find that you're going to do a little bit better. So it can hit you both ways if you're playing bad and let it get to you or if you're hitting it good and you take it for granted, I think it can be uh, detrimental. So try to stay in the moment, in the shot, do the best you can every single shot to give yourself the best chance for the next one and go until you get it in the hole, get onto the next one and do it again and just be relentless in your pursuit to hit the best shot you can each time you get over the ball. Okay, the next one uh, is somewhat uh, repetitive and that is I have a question how do you uh, keep calm and steady mind even after playing rounds of bad golf? So the question is how not to get frustrated easily after hitting a bad shot and making it affect the rest of your game. Also asking for a friend. So that being said, uh, it's pretty much the same as before, is that we're looking to keep each golf shot in its own world. You're going to hit bad golf shots. In my opinion, I think most people have unrealistic expectations of what they should be expecting when they play a round of golf. You know, why are you out there in the first place? Is it to have fun? Is it to be competitive? All of those things are going to typically be better if you're having fun. First of all, you're going to typically pay a little bit better. That doesn't mean be nonchalant or lackadaisical. That just means to take it for what it is, a golf shot. You're a human. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to hit bad golf shots. You're going to hit good golf shots. They, again, don't necessarily play off each other unless you allow them to. So try to look at each golf shot for what it is. Experience the golf shot. Go from that one to the next one and play throughout the round and enjoy each one. Don't let one affect the next one quite so much. Again, some people like to think that you should ride the good wave as far as possible. But to me, I think that also can be detrimental, again, because it can create overconfidence uh, and not going through your process as effectively as you should is if you're looking at each golf shot the same. Okay, on to the next one. Brad, perhaps you could share with us senior golfers who have lost a lot of flexibility, agility, and strength how we should adjust our golf swing to maximize our enjoyment of the game, just a thought. So, again, this gets back to what reality is and not accepting reality and not trying to push boundaries to get better at your, uh, your craft or what you're trying to do in your game, but to accept the game for what it is in that, again, if you're, if you're not hitting the golf ball solid, 
and you're not hitting it consistent, you're going to have a hard time uh, maximizing your ability or taking it to another level. I think most people let their emotions get to them, and if they hit a couple of bad golf shots, get frustrated, again, which makes you get more tense, uh, makes you swing a little harder, a little faster, a little out of balance. Who knows? And as you do that, it's very difficult to hit consistent golf shots and maximize your ability. So instead of hitting it further and trying to hit it harder, I suggest people to always slow down, back up, make smaller golf swings that can create more consistent golf shots, hitting the ball more in the center of the club face, which transfers energy to the golf ball, makes it go straighter, makes it go a little bit more, uh, a little bit further potentially. Um, even though you are swinging a little bit easier because you are squaring the face up and transferring energy to the golf ball. So uh, believe it or not, instead of trying to compensate, making a longer swing, a harder swing, a faster swing, I say slow it down. Make more consistent contact. If you need to take a couple extra clubs, do so. I know that's a tough pill to swallow. I had to do it. I lost a lot of distance when I broke off his hand and yeah, even today, my brain still thinks I should be hitting nine irons 160 yards, which, you know, requires a four hybrid for me now, basically. So, uh, it's hard to do that, but trying to slow down, making more consistent contact with the golf ball, more consistent golf shots, uh, to me, makes it more fun. Uh, a good, solid golf shot that goes two-thirds the distance of what you once could hit it, to me, is more fun and brings more joy than if you're able to do that seven, eight times out of 10, instead of that one out of 10 that you do hit the distance that you used to because you swung very hard or out of balance, not able to do that consistently, but you do produce it every now and again. I think that consistency and that boring golf to me is more fun. And play from the up tees. If you're a senior, uh, play as far up as you can go. And at the end of the day, if you're not competing, there is no rule in it. Well, there's rules in it. Now, yeah, USGA and being able to use a handicap, but I don't think anybody's going to have anything to say. If you play from further up and play at a distance that you're able to get to the hole in regulation and score the golf ball, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, another thing I told one student of mine a long time ago, I mean, this is probably 20 years ago, I had a student that was 90, I think he was 96 years old. And his name was Pappy, is what everyone called him. Uh, Morse was his real name. Uh, but anyway, uh, I told him to tee the ball up. I said, tee that thing up all the way around that golf course. If it makes you have more fun and have a good time out there and hit better golf shot, tee that thing up. You're not allowed to do it in the real game of golf, but if it makes you have fun, do it. It's easier to hit a ball off a tee. If it wasn't, you'd be able to do it throughout the round anyway, but you can only do it on the teeing area. So if it helps you have more fun, Tee it up. We used to find tees in random places around the golf course, seeing him after he had teed up a golf ball. Maybe I think he had more fun doing it. So keep it realistic. Understand that we are going to lose some ability and some speed and whatnot as we get older, but try to make more consistent golf shots. Swing smaller, swing slower, and then push the envelope, but know where your home base is when it comes to effort level. The moment you hit your point of diminishing returns with effort level, you need to recognize that and come back to an area and a, an a, an ability where you can swing in balance, make consistent golf shots, and just get consistent at striking the ball and moving it forward. If you have any other questions about this, I know I started to ramble there for a minute, which again, I told you I think was going to be a, a problem with this conversation because these conversations can be talked about in, in many other facets and can include a lot more of thought process in general. I'm actually... Uh, hopefully going to be adding to the Puzzle Duck Golf book uh, two or three more chapters uh, to make a second edition uh, in the next year or whoever knows how long, hopefully sooner than that, that are going to go more in depth into questions just like this uh, because I personally don't think the golf swing gets any more complicated uh, than I write about it in the book as it is. I mean, I read it all the time and don't think I can change that uh, a whole lot. I mean, there's not a whole lot I can add to that because I don't think it's any more complicated than what I write about it. So uh, getting into here and enjoying the game and understanding uh, what it's all about, having your expectations be realistic, 
knowing uh, that there are a lot of things that affect your speed, your effort level, your uh, just your your thought process, decision making process when you play the game uh, is is getting more and more important to me. Have fun playing the game. Go out there, get it done, and and just take it for what it is. Slow down. Hit solid golf shots. Swing in bounds. Don't hurt yourself, and have a good time with it. If you have any other questions, anyone else would like me to talk about something later uh, next month, please feel free to to uh, to submit that to Brad at puzzlegolf.com and I'll also add some of the ones that I missed from last month next time uh, as well. Hope all is well. Thank you very much. Uh, Brad at puzzleduckgolf.com and the website is puzzleduckgolf.com Have a great day. We'll look forward to seeing you in March.